So let's get into that today's content, which is um, I want to introduce the distance and MDS algorithms. These are very convenient, um, useful algorithms, but for some reason are not so popular once you step outside of those um, 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 data science world. So I just wanted to um, uh, introduce and then show like how you can use in exploratory. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> so what is the distance? Distance is uh, basically what it is. So it's when you have uh, two places and then you, know, you, you talk about the distance between those two points or two places or two cities or whatever, that's what it is. So it's very simple. The concept itself is very like, sort of like intuitively uh, familiar, uh, should be familiar. So the different type of uh, way to calculate the distances um, a distance, so um, the, you know, many, but uh, I wanna talk about the three things, uh, very common, uh, three uh, different types of uh, distance um, methods. Euclidean, Manhattan, binary. So let's start with the Euclidean distance. What is the Euclidean distance? To explain, uh, let's use some example. There are um, voting records are all available for the United Nations, right? So like since the beginning of the United Nations, it was like 1945 and today. But uh, we have this data. We just pick random like United Nations General Assembly resolutions, okay? And then so the one is the Jerusalem, something about the Jerusalem, uh, about criticizing U.S. policy on the Jerusalem. And then so that, that, that was voted uh, by you know, all the members of the United Nations. Either yes or no, right? And then the other, another one is called Ukraine. Um, I think the territorial integrity of Ukraine. So there was another vote. So let's pick these two voting and then see how each country voted, either yes or no, sometimes abstain or absence, right? So let's say for the U Jerusalem resolution, the US said no, but for Ukraine, US said yes. And Russia voted an opposite way. And Canada voted uh, yes for Ukraine, but for Jerusalem, they abstain. Okay, so these are the results. And then these are the texts, right? Yes or no. And in order for us to, we basically what we want to do from here is that we want to calculate the distance between the US, Russia, and Canada so that like, we can see like, which countries are similar, which countries are far from each other. To do, we want to actually map those characters to numeric values, then like, we can do the calculation, or the, you know, you, we can do the math, right? So let's say like, yes is one, no is minus one, and the absence or abstain is zero, because they didn't say yes or no, basically. Then like, we can come up with this kind of num numeric uh, representation of the voting. So like US is minus one for Jerusalem, one for Ukraine, Russia is the opposite, and so on. And once we get this, then like, we can actually calculate the Ukrainian distance or Manhattan distance or whatever. So to do is so, to, to visual, so first let's visualize this so that we can understand more intuitively uh, what's the distance really mean. So this is a two dimensional space because we have only two uh, resolutions conveniently. So like Ukraine is the Y axis and Jerusalem resolution is the, uh, the X axis. And then U.S. Uh, is Jerusalem for one, minus one, Ukraine for like one. So therefore, like U.S. position is kind of left on side top. And Canada, uh, their Jerusalem resolution, it's zero, right? Because they abstain. And then, however, like Ukraine is one. So like Canada is like kind of at the top on the y-axis. Russia is exact, almost like uh, um, opposite direction from U.S. Because they, uh, they vote in the opposite way from U.S. So we can express these three countries' voting results by using a two-dimensional space like this. Then once we get this, it's very simple. Like the direct, so Euclidean distance is really the direct distance. So let's say like you, Euclidean distance between US and Russia is just like you draw the line and that's the distance. Canada in the same way, Canada, Russia, and so on. It's just a direct uh, straight line. That's the Euclidean distance in a nutshell. So what is then the next one? is Manhattan distance. So Manhattan distance is the name, as the name suggests, it's, uh, you know, the Manhattan is known for like a grid, that in the city of a grid, right? So instead of going to straight line, it goes by like X or Y, like only like these two, uh, two ways that they can go. So for example, for uh, the distance between the US and Russia, we can't go 
uh, dialect because that's not on the grid. So you, if you follow the grid, I mean, there are many ways to get to the Russia, but I just make it simple. Uh, just go all the way down and then go to all the way to the uh, right side and then hit the Russia right from US. So that's basically is four now. Okay. And then for the Canada and the US, it's actually one. So this is very similar to the Euclidean distance. It happened to be that straight line be on the grid line. So it's one. So like when you compare between Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance, and left-hand side Euclidean, right-hand side is Manhattan. Okay, so the, uh, the US, Canada, bo in both cases, basically the same, but the, between the US and Russia is different, right? So like Euclidean distance, the distance is 2.8, Manhattan is four, it's much bigger than the uh, Euclidean distance. So when you kind of change that uh, dimension here is that, to see like, a, you know, that to compare the lengths of the distance. So now, like I said, like US and Russia, like a distance between those two countries, much bigger in Manhattan than the Euclidean. So Manhattan distance tend to emphasize the diff uh, difference more, but that's uh, so basically the difference. So it's not like which one is better or the less kind of stuff, but it, it depends like you know, how you wanna uh, emphasize the differences then like you might want to go with the Manhattan and so on. But Euclidean distance is uh, you know used very common so uh, if you get confused like you want to start with the Euclidean first uh, and then that's the algorithm we're going to use uh, today anyway. Okay and then another one is binary distance and this is actually pretty convenient and sometimes you might want to use this one over the, the other distance uh, calculations. So binary distance is really is one minus Jacquard index. And this Jacquard index, uh, that name kind of like a scary because um, you know, most of us don't even know, but it's actually pretty simple uh, when you think about it. So um, here, here's a table, um, let me see, okay. So we used to have like only Jerusalem and Ukraine, those are two resolutions, right? But there are a bunch of resolutions in the United Nations and every year. So let's give a name, like ID for each resolution. So that's like rows here. So RC under ID, the resolution underscore ID. So one, two, three, four, and a five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? And then like each column is a country, how each country voted. So like it's one or zero, like we saw um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, we made it like if it's true, a one, and if it's false, and then like a zero or something. So it's very simple. Um, and then, uh, and if maybe like abstain cases could be NA, but that's not uh, uh, that as important here. So let's pick two countries. Let's say like US and Japan. And if we want to see these two countries are similar or not. They go far or not from each other, right? So to do here is basically we use kind of a Venn diagram kind of thing. So left hand side, the US, and then right hand side, uh, Japan, the blue circle is Japan. And then like we try to see like how, what are the boats are same. So like if it's the same, that means those two circles are kind of like overlapping each other. So that at the, uh, at between, so like the solution ID one and five, five is not on the left-hand side table, but imagine like it there is, that means both US and Japan vote in the same way, especially in this case, one. And then the blue side, let's say like the solution ID three and seven, only Japan voted as one, but the US didn't. So that's why it's, um, it's only on the blue. And the same way for the two and six, those are like only on the US, right? So, so this is kind of like a uh, very basic. And then now like, let's pick the US and Canada. And in this case, it turned out US and Canada voted, um, both of them voted one in many times. And the only time US voted, uh, but uh, Canada didn't was four. Or US voted one and then US didn't. So Canada voted one, and US data was in seven. So, so now two circles, this Venn diagram was overlapping each other with more uh, significant space, right? It's more like overlapping. So by just looking at, uh, and they also like, let's use another extreme example, like US and Russia, you, they tend to vote in um, different ways. So then on, it turned out only one time, like resolution six, they voted on the same way, and it was, I mean, same value in this case, one, but other than that, they voted different. So 
you start kind of getting the feeling of like, okay, so this binary distance or jacquard basically index is about if this two Venn diagram is getting closer or getting far from each other. So uh, based on the result or like how many times they voted together or not. Okay, so here the very close case is like the center, US and Canada. So like both circles of super uh, overlapping. At the right hand side, on, on the other hand, the US and Russia, it's a little bit overlapping, but it's almost like these two circles are two different circles. Then once you get that, and the basic Jacquard index is that basically you do the calculation. It's about a ratio of like overlapping area divided by all, all of the um, voting uh, numbers of all of the total. So the ratio of overlapping basically, uh, right? <clears throat> So then, so that, that's the Jacquard index. So that means, so when you think about it, so if that number, Jacquard index is higher, that means those two countries are similar, right? Because the overlapping area is bigger. So that means two countries are very similar in the Canada, Can Canadian case, a US Canada case. But then we're talking about distance here. So distance, when you think about it, like it's smaller number is closer and a bigger number is far, right? So, so to make it more like kind of this in the context of distance, we just make it the number opposite. So like by doing that, uh, by my one minus Jacquard index, then basically it uh, becomes a binary distance. And that is just that like opposite direction from Jacquard index. And that's what it is. So now once you do this calculation, one minus Jacquard index, then all of a sudden, the bigger number is far, and this smaller number is closer. So um, that's what it is. But it's just that kind of like a, uh, the way to calculate is different from Euclidean or Manhattan. Okay. And then the binary distance is more convenient when you have this kind of voting type of thing, uh, numbers. So let's say the difference is only like one or zero, then uh, you might want to use this binary distance. But your numbers, so let's say, um, you know, like the, let's say like a weight or height or uh, you know, some kind of like a salary or like a sale. So those numbers, then obviously those are not, cannot be expressed just by simply one or zero. And in that case, you might want to go with Euclidean or sometimes you might have them. But sometimes that uh, <clears throat> number is very simple, just one or zero kind of stuff, then binary distance uh, can work better. If you're not sure, like you should try uh, either way. And then like you can kind of get uh, the feel for it, I mean, by visualizing that data. And then, which I'm going to explain after this. So, so that's in the, the distance in nutshell. And then let's try and then with our data. Uh, here we have 2016 California election data. So this is like a few years ago. This is where like the United States elected uh, Donald Trump as the president and then Hillary Clinton lost that election. So that, that, that was a national level election for the presidential election. But at the same time, each state has their own uh, election as well, and typically uh, they sometimes choose the senators and the Congress uh, folks, but also they have this thing called um, ballot measures. So ballot is basically, you know, um, in this case, it says that uh, adult food condom requirements, the bound single-use plastic bag, carrier bag charges, cigarette tax, and there are about um, 17 ballot measures that like people voted yes or no, right? So, and then these are done by the county level and then, um, sorry, like at the state level. But uh, the data is available by the county level. So we can see, let's say, like a county in California, for example, like Los Angeles, San Francisco, Santa Cruz, and so on. There are about 59 counties. And we can see like each, how each county voted for each ballot. So let's say like a, uh, let's say San Francisco said yes on the bound single use uh, plastic bag or no kind of stuff. So that uh, the result can be seen as a yes ratio that indicates how much of the voters in each county voted yes. Okay. So then question here is based on the data, can we find out which counties are similar to each other or far from each other? And that's what we want to do. Um, so let's take a look at uh, the data quickly. So here I already imported. And then, so here's a county name and a ballot measure and then yes ratio. 
there's a party name that's like a rep, uh, uh, for example, this Alameda voted for uh, Democratic. So this is actually based on which um, presidential candidate uh, they voted for as a <clears throat> as a whole. So more people voted for Democratic. Uh, that means Hillary Clinton at the time. And if you see the Republican, that means this county voted for Donald Trump uh, as a as a whole, whole in the count, at the county level. Okay, so, and then go to the summary view, we can see county name, there are like 58, and then ballot measure, there are 17. I think I got the numbers wrong in the slide, but uh, um, so we have a 17 ballot measures and then 58 county. And here's the ES ratio. It's very kind of like a nice uh, normal distribution, but uh, 0.18 and to uh, 87, 87, this is like a percent, so like 80, uh, think of it like a ratio, so like 87%. Okay, now let's first like I want to just uh, visualize quickly to see like what uh, type of data this one is. So if I assign a uh, ballot measure as x axis and y axis, I'm going to assign a yes ratio. And what we are seeing here is uh, each. So let me bring county name to the label. So each dot is basically each county, and then how they voted uh, for each uh, ballot measure. Okay, so this, by the way, this 2016 ballot measures are kind of like a crazy, uh, crazy year um, for me. Uh, for example, that was the year that like a California tried to uh, vote, uh, see like uh, marijuana should be legalized or not. And also there was like a fire, uh, something to do with the firearms. So like, should we make it harder for purchasing the fi firearm? Or should we increase the cigarette tax? And then, uh, should we mandate uh, porn uh, actors to wear the condom uh, or not? So it was kind of like a super, uh, very uh, Californian uh, stuff. So when I go back to my country, like if I mention about marijuana, I'm going to be in kind of like trouble. Uh, people look at me as kind of a crazy guy. But then, you know, California is very uh, legit uh, ballot measure. Um, but anyway, nonetheless, so we, you see there, um, you know, very, very different, right? So like some county, like for example, this is like a marijuana thing. It's like, a, this, this one is like a 0.44. This is like a 44% of people agree or you said yes. And for example, higher is a San Francisco, 74% of the voters said yes. Um, and there's something like, for example, um, here, when you look at the, uh, this one is like a firearms, and then a firearm, so like uh, this Lassen, uh, uh, the Modoc, these are like uh, kind of like up in North area of the California. They voted 19 or 20%. So that means most of people, like 80% of the people said no. And the opposite to that is San Francisco. This is also another crazy. It's like 85% of the voters said yes, and only 15% said no. So this one is probably like it's very uh, diverse. It's, um, um, you know, some counties said yes, and strongly some counties said uh, no strongly. So you can see like, uh, so how is it voted by this visualization? And then like if I can assign the uh, party name, so like, you know, so this one now, this orange color is a Republican uh, as a whole, as a, as a county level, but the Republican counties, that means these counties voted for Donald Trump and then blue counties voted for Hillary Clinton at the time or the Democratic candidate at the time. So, um, and then you can see, for example, firearms, um, you know, Republican uh, counties tend to, uh, don't like, uh, you know, making harder to purchase the gun and then instead like a, uh, democratic counties uh, try to make it harder or something. Um, and then something like uh, uh, here, uh, so, so you kind of see like uh, Republican counties tend to be on the bottom side and then uh, blue counties tend to be higher and except like some of the measures are slightly different. But from here though, like you can see maybe some of the county, I'm gonna just show the county name. This is kind of gonna go crazy a little bit, but San Francisco uh, is usually at the top, right? And then let's look at some, something just a um, uh, controversial thing. So like for example, ballot measure is a uh, firearm. Let's focus on just one me uh, measure. And then here's San Francisco, Marine, Alameda. Alameda is where uh, Pixar and also Berkeley, Oakland are, and then San Mateo and then so on. So these counties, uh, in terms of the distance, it's very close, right? And then when this Maddox and Lassen, these two counties very close to each other, 
But last in Maddox and in San Francisco, just super far. Right. So like by just looking at just one ballot measure, we can start feeling um, for like there's some distance, uh, some relationship among the counties based on the distance. And then now like we can, we actually have on not only one um, ballot measure, we can actually use a bunch of ballot measures. So now the question is, hey, it's like which counties are closer to each other? And then by using all this information, and that's what we are going to do. So going to the analytics view, and then, uh, so there are like a distance. So here's a distance by column, distance by categories. I'm gonna start with distance by categories and then uh, explain what are the difference between these two. So let's start with that. But for now, let's focus on the distance itself, not about this menu. And so like, I'm gonna select this and then select the county as a, uh, I'm gonna select the county name for the uh, category. And the measured by is the measure title. This happened to be the same name, but have nothing to do with each other. But uh, this one is basically, is like a sort of like, it can be uh, this uh, <clears throat> product name or, uh, you know, like for example, the country name or whatever. Something that uh, you want to use on here. So this column, so how you want to measure this uh, each county. That's what uh, this one is for. And the measure, that's where the, uh, the value should go. Otherwise, just number of rows. In that case, you get only one. So uh, all the value could be one. That's, what we, uh, that's not what we want. So we're going to select the yes ratio, right? how uh, each county voted yes for each ballot. And then click run button. And then like, we get this heat map. OK, so this heat map, the way you can read is basically, uh, this, so let's focus on San Francisco. Uh, we, I think we have, oh, here you go. So San Francisco, look at it. So the highest red color is basically, uh, the darker the red is becoming zero, and then the darker the blue becoming kind of like uh, big values, right? So this one is showing the basically the calculation result of Euclidean distance. So uh, closer to the zero means it's closer. Uh, sorry, uh, the darker the red meaning the closer. So the value is smaller, that means closer, right? The distance. So the darkest is one zero here, but this is to itself. So San Francisco, San Francisco, of course, is a zero. It's the same thing. So now like you want to see, like, uh, let's say like San Francisco Marine, this is like 0 0.21. And these numbers doesn't really mean anything in the absolute sense. So it's more thinkable. It's kind of like you can use it as a sort of a relative sense in a way. And then now, so Marine, San Francisco, 0 0.21. So for San Francisco, the closest county is actually Marine. And the next one is this Alameda. Um, so Alameda, again, is uh, the county for Berkeley and Oakland. And for example, other uh, stuff, uh, let's say, like, let's look at uh, Santa Cruz. And then the closest county for the Santa Cruz is um, this, like, Alameda is closer. And Marine is also closer. And then uh, San Mateo is closer or something like that. So you can, and then also other thing is when you see the blue, especially the darkest blue, right? So like for example here, Modoc, San Francisco, they're very far. And Lassen, Lassen is usually known for like beautiful, I think some paintings about Lassen, I think um, you might be familiar with. But anyway, so Lassen and San Francisco is very far in this data. It's almost like a farthest uh, between the two. And that might be something you might, uh, get the sense of it by looking at this chart. So for example, here's the San Francisco at the top, and then we saw that already. And then that's basically um, why we are seeing that, that type of result. Okay, so now we basically get this heat map, and the heat map is kind of uh, interesting uh, or useful to see the relationship. Okay, so now I understand like which counties are closer to San Francisco. But, there's one problem. So basically though, what we are doing is <clears throat> trying to see the distance between the two, like any given pair of two counties here. But like we kind of like get a little bit confused by too much information uh, expressed in here. So, you know, and then almost like basically like you have to look into like every single combination to see those numbers. But there are better way to understand this type of relationship. So that is where this multi-dimensional scaling, often called MDS algorithm, comes in. 
So distance, uh, so let's take a look at this chart, right? So this is sim basically similar to what we just saw uh, in a heat map, except this is actual distance between two cities, any given two cities. So San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York. Okay, and basically this is the information we are looking at. In this, this is the kind of information we are looking at in a heat map, except we had the color. Okay, but um, so if we express this, for example, San Francisco, New York, Los Angeles, uh, New York, and all, and so on. But this is basically like we are using the one-dimensional space from left to right, right? But instead, why don't we use two-dimensional scale? Because this is how we look at the map, right? And we don't, so like when we look at the map, all of a sudden, okay, so New York, San Francisco, Los Angeles, okay, so this is the sort of like a relationship, quote-unquote relationship. Meaning San Francisco, Los Angeles, super close, and then New York is far from those two cities, right? So like now, like instead of just one distance by uh, each distance, like we can start understanding kind of like overall relationship among the, uh, in this case, states. And basically that's what we want to do. Instead of looking at the distance amount between each pair, instead like we want to express this heat map, the, the information we are looking at in the heat map in the two dimensional space, to express the relationship among the uh, counties. Okay, so that is basically in exploratory. You can just only uh, click on this similarity map. And then what just happened was actually uh, when you run this uh, behind the scene, like MDS algorithm also was run on top of this information. And then <clears throat> this information is basically, it's kind of like this. Like every single pair has a distance numbers. So that, this information was uh, visualized in a heat map. And on top of this information, the MDS algorithm basically uh, create X, uh, X axis and Y axis values, and then using the uh, scatter plot to express this way. Okay, so what is cool about this is that now, not only I see like a San Francisco and the most left hand side bottom, and then Madoc and then Madoc and Rasen on the most uh, right hand side bottom. Instead, um, we can see like which counties are kind of closer to San Francisco or the like San Francisco side, and which counties are similar to Rasen and Madoc. And also in this case, I am seeing that third dimension, which is like here the Imperial. San Bernardino, Riverside, there's, um, these are, if you're familiar with the Californian counties, these are kind of like uh, central or southern um, uh, counties in California. So it seems like these are not similar to San Francisco and not even similar to Mono Cross. And there's some kind of like a different uh, county. So it happened to be like not just left and right, it's, it's more to do with, um, uh, you know, the way they voted, right? So, so that's what we are seeing here. Okay, and these color are uh, basically like on top of this um, dimension uh, space, uh, this like an MDS result, uh, we run the K mean clustering to just uh, color it based on the position. You can change this though, like for example, seems like we have like more, you know, we can kind of like uh, create more clusters. In that case, click on this property and then uh, cluster here, de default to three, we can see, make it like a five, for example, then you're gonna see like a five different groups or something based on the, the, the positions of each county on this two dimensional space. Okay, and now um, here, like we have the method. So in the property, uh, the default Euclidean, but I can change that to the Manhattan, for example. And then if the result in this case is uh, this like a numeric numbers, but if this is like a binary, let's say one or zero or something like that, then in that case, you can actually, uh, you might want to uh, select the binary and that usually gives you a better result in terms of like a differentiating the group or like finding the similarity among, uh, among the clusters. And from here, um, there is one thing. Uh, so let's say, for example, um, you might want to actually use this uh, result to, you know, join with other data, and then, like, you know, maybe like visualize in some way or something like that. Like you can. So if that's the case, you can actually click on this export uh, chart bottom, 
and then create a new data frame from this data. So if I click on it, and then whatever the name, I'm going to just uh, use a default. And then basically, this is the data behind that chart that we are looking at. So you have the axis one, axis two, those like X and Y, and then color was using this class time information, and then the county name. And you remember like we had, you used to have like, hey, San Francisco voted for Democratic candidate or Marine, uh, you know, other state, uh, other county voted for Republican candidate, right? So like we can bring that information by using this join. And then let's say uh, California, I think the, the, the original one had that information. So I'm gonna just join it. So now like I got, I brought that party name information back for each county. And then, ooh, I think uh, there was something that uh, I didn't, San Francisco is, uh, it seems like something is get, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay. So we don't need that much of the information. So, ooh. Uh, where did it go? Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna instead, that's, uh, just create a branch name. And then um, <clears throat> let's imagine uh, we all we need to do is like we basically I wanted to have the kind of like a mapping so like a, uh, one like a county to one party name but right now because of this like a major title are different so like each county has like about like seventeen rows but I want to actually make one row for each county to do like I can just select on this and then uh, select these two count uh, two columns and select the keep only. The unique rows uh, uh, as a menu. So, like, if I select this, and then basically, ooh, what happened? Yeah, I keep other columns. No, I don't need the other columns. So, like, I'm gonna just make it false. And then now I have only like four, 58 rows, each county in each row. And then like I have the party name information. And once I get this, then like I want to go back. I can go back here, and instead of joining to the original CA election, I want to join to the uh, this uh, branch data frame, like which I actually uh, made it keep only the unique row. Um, so here, California election one, and then now, like I uh, even like after the join, like I have only fifty eight rows. And here, once we get this information, and then the cool thing is now I can basically do uh, select the scatter plot and assign axis to axis uh, x and y. And then if I select the cluster, and that's what we used to have, right? So again, like, except we had this um, color, we use uh, color setting and show circle. I think we used to have this circle thing, uh, or maybe field circle, something like this. Uh, I'm gonna just go with just the circles. And then like, we used to show the label, the so county name, Something like this. So basically, this is what we used to have. But here, instead of using a label, like I want to, I can use a party name. Uh, oops, wait, 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 wait. Uh, the color, the party name. And then um, let's take this circle things away. There you go. So now we can see though, it's like, so right hand side, bottom. So this group are Republican counties. And then the other are uh, uh, Democratic counties. And even the Democratic counties, there was some kind of, like a, you know, kind of going towards the top, like Los Angeles, or there's like a Southern California cluster, and then uh, Northern California cluster, like San Francisco, Marine, and Sonoma, and Alameda, and so on. So like you can see, um, you know, by creating a new different data frame, you can join with other things, and then you can do some other data drangling, and then visualize in a very flexible, uh, way you can. So that's, um, and then another thing is, uh, for example, you might want to use a chart. So uh, map area chart. And then like there's uh, US counties. If you might not have, ooh, you, uh, that's okay. Uh, if you don't have that map you're looking for, you always can click on the setup. And then like that's where like you can uh, um, find the maps that you might be interested in. If you don't find it, let us know, and then we can help you to get uh, such map. And then here's the key column. So I want to uh, assign a county name. And then 
Ooh. So county name, uh, I think this is good. I'm getting it. Uh, no. Ooh, wait a second. I think I have a California uh, county. Let's use that one instead. And then this is like a name, uh, county name. And then this is like, let's say, a cluster or something. So this is where uh, I can see, for example, uh, you know, like this, like a California, like a, uh, a cluster four, the one that like we used to have. Um, and then like you can see, for example, this is like a cluster two. What is a cluster two? Well, like we can look at this cluster two in, um, in a color. I will, if I bring the color back here, the cluster two is like a Maddox Rassen cluster. And then these are like a Republican cluster actually. And then uh, go to here. So like you can see like a those cl uh, counties are actually here. So it's more flexible once you get to the data, fr uh, its own data frame. Uh, but you know, you can use analytics view to kind of do, um, you know, more like experimental, more like exploration um, thing. So now having said that, there's uh, I think a little, still a little time. Like I want to talk about the one thing. So that's pretty much about the distance. And you can use a lot, you know, more different ways, um, uh, different subjects. For example, I use it for like, you know, finding the similarity among the counties. But you can use for, for example, between the co uh, countries, between the products, between your customers, um, so many uh, things as long as they're categories. And then you want to use some, some kind of measure. In this case, I use measure title, uh, valid measure. But let's say that like, if, if you want to uh, find a similarity among your customers, then you might want to see like which website pages they're visiting, how many times, right? So in that case, the, the, the page name can be the measure here. And then accounts can be the value. Um, or you know, maybe like you do the survey for your employee. Employee can be the subject to a category. And then these are the questions. And then like this is the answer, like a zero to five scale um, and so on. Then you can see like, you know, you, the relationship among your employee or customers or products or, you know, uh, whatever the categories as well. So it's very uh, convenient. So now I, so I want to actually talk about one thing um, other than the distance. So this is very useful for the distance too. So, so this data right now that we have is called long data. And what is wrong data is that like, um, in, this is something to the data wrangling, but uh, it's very convenient knowledge to uh, have. So long data, white data, uh, there are two different types of data formats. So white data is that like something like this. So, like, so we used to have the like, county column and that column had a Sacramento, San Francisco, Los Angeles, and so on. But this white data is each county becomes a column, right? So that if there are more counties, then the data becomes wider. So that's white data. And then the long data is the one that we have, right? So the county is going to, uh, to, the, um, going to the bottom. So the more counties, the data becomes longer. So that's a long data. <clears throat> Then we can basically transform this uh, data to, from one format to another format. Let's say like from wide to long or long to wide. So, uh, and then the way you do it is using the gather. And then, so that is to transform the wide data to long data. So something like this. And this is very useful. Uh, imagine like sometimes you get the Excel and then like each column is actually the month. But obviously you want to actually bring that to the uh, month column to have a January, February, uh, March or something like that uh, because that makes easier to visualize the data. Um, so sometimes you can use that. And then basically when you use the gather command, uh, I'm going to show you later in the uh, exploratory, and then you ended up like having the data to be something like at the bottom. And obviously you can do the opposite, which is uh, something uh, called spread or pivot. And then basically, like you, that's the opposite, right? So like from the right-hand side, it's like long data. And then sometimes it's better it's, uh, to have the data in a wider format. And so something uh, becomes kind of from the top to the bottom. And you can actually go be between these two formats very easily. And once you know how to do it, 
and uh, it's much uh, makes your uh, it makes your data analysis like much easier. So um, that's the last piece I want to show you quickly how you do in Xcode. So this data is long. Why? Because county or ballot measure, either way, is kind of going down. So each new data will be added at the bottom, right? But let's say, like, hey, you know what? Like, I want to bring this county to the column. And by the way, you can bring this measure to the column as well, right? So let's say, let's start with this county name. So like, if I want to bring this to the, uh, uh, to the column, all you need to do is basically like you select this uh, county name and yes ratio and then select the spread. But by the way, though, this spread is a little tricky um, because if you have something like Democrat, uh, what's going to happen is here, if I do this, I get this dialog and I click round button. What happened is each measure is, should be each row, but in this case, each measure have the two rows because the party name, Democratic, Republican, these cannot be merged together. So we have two. So that means Alameda, every Alameda um, row has an A or value for each, uh, each measure. So that's kind of like not really what we want right now. So like I, instead, I'm going to go back to the uh, previous step and get this party name drop first and then run this spread. And then now like basically uh, this is what we get. So like we have like each row represent each measure and then a column represent each county. How, and then the value is how each county voted for each measure. We could have done this in the opposite way. Instead, for example, oh, I'm, I'm gonna do that later. So now like, the reason I wanted to do here is for example, then we can do, go to the analytics and then you can select the distance by columns. So before we select the distance by categories, right? But in this case, I wanna see the, by the columns. So like I wanna see the distance between these columns. So that's what we can do. Uh, select the distance by columns. And then variable is now the county becomes the variable or uh, simply the columns. And then like, we wanna find a similarity among these columns, in this case, counties. And then run. And I should get basically the exact same information, as uh, same kind of information. Um, so there are two different ways um, to do this analysis based on uh, how the data is. Uh, so in this case, I have the data in a wide format. So that's why like, I can um, present it like this. So, but if you had the data to be long format, or this is sometimes in, a, uh, in the world of R or data science, we call it tidy data. But uh, if you have the data in this format, then you wanna do is select the uh, distance by categories. So now sometimes though, so this one is when you have if you even spread the columns, we have only like a 59 columns, right? So 58 counties plus one major column. But sometimes imagine like when you have like a product and you have, you're dealing with 500 products or something, or even a county, uh, countries, and then you have like 100, um, I think like 90 countries in the world. And for the, let's say you're working on the United Nations data or something like that, then you, your data becomes super long. And then sometimes happen is when you make this kind of format, that means it's a grid between this case a country, a county and a ballot. Sometimes let's say like imagine like the row is customer and then the column is a you know, product feature or the uh, website pages or something like that. So that means some customer might didn't even visit some of the pages. So like it ended up like having something called sparse data, a bunch of like NA or like kind of like empty stuff. And that's not really an uh, efficient way to have the data in the memory space or uh, in, in, a, in this session or in the system. So that's why it's better to have the data in a long format and then let the algorithm take care of it. And so basically when you select this like, distance by categories, behind the scene, it is actually transforming the data into the spread or like a wider format um, because otherwise the algorithm cannot do the calculation. But when it does, it actually uses very efficient way to store those kind of temporary data. It's called a sparse matrix. So that's why um, uh, if you can, then you, wanna, you might, uh, I recommend you have the data in a kind of a long format 
and then use that like a distance by category, categories and to do. But sometimes it's much easier to have this way and then like, hey, you know what? Like I want to uh, find a distance between uh, each other. No, sorry, not easier, more intuitive. In that case, that's, um, you know, this might be the option for you as well. Okay. And then now, if you happen to get this uh, data in this format, instead of like long format, like sometimes somebody give you the data in this format. And then, you know, this is kind of like a tricky because you can't start visualizing um, in the way like, for example, I did. Like I want to actually assign county to Y axis or X axis in the scatter plot. I mean, there's no county column, right? So, so that case, you can actually select all these columns by using a shift key. And then any of the column headers is fine. And then there is a gather. This is like way too long. And then you can either like select the columns. But I recommend that if you have like a bunch of uh, columns, then you just say selected range from this column to that column. So selected range. So there are a bunch of different ways to select the columns. And then now like you want to type like a key and value column name. For now, I'm going to go just run it. And what happens like a big, the county, the original column becomes a key, and then the value, uh, the cells become the value. And instead of a key and value, if you want to change that, uh, you can actually uh, type the name. So, like this is a county. And then uh, maybe here is, let's say, like yes, uh, ratio or something like that. So what I have just done is I used to have like a long format and then make it spread and then gather back again. And usually you don't do this kind of like a spread and gather and stuff, but sometimes it's easier to do the data transformation in this format and then do the spread and we, if that is what you wanted uh, to visualize or do the analysis and stuff. But anyway, it's just knowing how to do gather and then spread makes your data wrangling and the data analysis life much easier. So I just wanted to share with you. Okay. So today, I think that's it. And then uh, if you have any questions, I want to actually uh, open up the question sessions. Here we go. I'm going to stop the